Hello and welcome to Little Wooly Things. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, if you're coming back to view the podcast again, welcome back. I'm so glad to know that you're out there choosing to spend some of your day with me. Uh, I'm feeling a bit rusty today because I haven't recorded a podcast in quite a while. Um, I actually spent some time yesterday trying to get some snippets of videos to do something sort of blog, or not blog, vlog, video blogging to show you. Yesterday was such a crazy day though that I only got part way through the day and then I just didn't even have time to think about pulling out my video camera or even my phone. So um, I am going to show you what I was up to yesterday and then we'll get into some more yarny goodness. This is your opportunity to find your favorite beverage, um, grab your knitting needles or your crochet hook or your um, cross stitching or whatever you're working on and just hang out, relax, and we will just spend some time together. I'm starting my day with my coffee and um, I'm headed out to the church to record Pastor Rod's sermon for our online church service this Sunday. Um, so I got my purse, because you gotta have that to drive, right? I got my tripod here, because you gotta have that. And a little video camera study, like I'm not doing right now. And of course the camera. So here I am, ready to head out the door and get started with my day. coffee, I got my external hard drive, all my stuff plugged into my computer. Hopefully it will um, keep up with all of this video editing. Hey, so here I am in my bathroom because that's where my laundry basket is. And um, I suppose I should tell you why I am standing here in my bathroom by my laundry basket. You may have guessed that I'm going to do a load of laundry and that would be accurate. Um, this is one of those times when I'm appreciating the fact that I am working from home because I've gotten quite frustrated with the project that I'm working on. And working from home allows me to get away from it for a few minutes and do mundane things like, you know, laundry. And while I'm doing my laundry, I can think about how in the world I'm going to tackle this thing that is frustrating me. So that's where I'm at. Working from home has its advantages, including like not having to brush your hair and stuff. So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll figure out how to handle this thing that I'm working on gracefully. And I'll get back to you and let you know how it goes.
Welcome back. Okay, so hopefully that little bit of vlogging kind of um, illustrated what my life has been like lately and it maybe gives you somewhat of an idea of why I haven't podcasted in a while. Anyway, um, let's move on and talk about some, um, where should we start? Let's see. Let's start with, I'm going to take my notes totally out of order here. Um, let's start with some yarn acquisitions. Now, there's a little bit of a story behind my yarn acquisitions for this episode. Um, I commented on a friend's Instagram story and she was talking about how her yarn stash had gotten completely out of control and she was not going to buy any more yarn until she had cleared out a certain amount of her yarn stash. And so um, I just kind of quipped back at her and said, hey, I can help you with that. And so she <laughs> messaged me back and she was like, what color do you want? <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no, I'm just kidding. Um, and she said, no, seriously, I'm having a bad day and I would love to be able to do something positive to um, lift somebody else up. So she sent me, I thought, well, okay, I told her I'm working on a scrappy blanket project. So anything fingering weight would be, you know, something I can completely work with for that project. And I'm not picky, just, you know, it's scrappy. I want it to look fun and crazy and any, anything goes. So I thought she would send me, you know, just some little ends of balls or whatever, because she asked um, if wound cakes were okay or not full skeins, and I was like, sure, I, I'm not picky. So let me show you what she sent me. Um, she sent me this, and these are uh, Yarn Cafe Creations, Fearless Feet, Fiber Co. I think, I think this one, this one, and this one are all Fearless Feet. Um, can you see the colors in here? Here, wait, let me open it up for you and I'll show you. And these are not just like little bits and bobs like I'm normally dipping into for this blanket project. These are big, big cakes of yarn. So this is Yarn Cafe, and she, she included little notes here. Yarn Cafe Creations Lurex Base, and she said the colorway is something to do with My Little Pony. She can't remember exactly what. Um, that's close enough for me. It's going to be fantastic in my blanket. And there's so much of this. Like, wow. Just in that one cake alone, I would have been happy. Okay, this one is Fearless Feet Fiber Co. Um, super sheepy. And this is in purple crocus. I hope that you can see this color. It's so pretty. I really love the um, the purple and the gold combination in that. Really nice and crocusy. I think that's that's well named. So then we have. Apologize for all the crinkling here. We have Fearless Feet Fiber Co. This is 100% Superwash Merino, and the colorway is Why Not. So that's got some beautiful pops of fuchsia and pink and like a spring green and more of that gold in there. Because why not, right? <laughs> and then the last ball in this bag is also Fearless Feet Fiber Co. And it is night sky and this is another 100 percent superwash merino and it looks to me on my little um screen on my camera that this is blowing out like all my colors are blowing out um, this is a beautiful navy and as you as you turn it and it catches the light it's got this undertone of like a charcoal black it's beautiful ruth thank you so much for sending me all this yarn i'm just I was floored when I saw the size of the package in my mailbox, and honestly surprised that it fit in my mailbox. And so, as if that weren't enough, wait, there's more. She also sent 
this bag of yarn. Like, what all is in here? This is crazy. Crazy good. I don't know what this is because there's no label on it, but isn't it gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yarn. This one is Haynes House Yarns. This is how we roll. This is her five deep rustic, 100% superwash, fingering weight. I have never worked with Haynes House Yarns before, so this is gonna be fun. There is a sock set from Fearless Feet Fiber Co. Look at these beautiful colors. This is um, Squash Blossom, Fathoms Below, and African Violet, 75-25 sock yarn. And so most of these yarns are fi Fearless Feet Fiber Co. because that's who Ruth Grash is, Fearless Feet Fiber Co. Um, and I have discovered that yarn dyers have the best yarn stashes ever, anywhere. Okay, so now we also have Knitted Wit Victory Sock. And this is called Fairy Garden. And this is an 80-20, 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And then What the Flock. Um, it's a sock set. Let's see. And I'm not sure if What the Flock is the colorway name. Maybe. Isn't that pretty? Like, I love these colors. This berry, like maroon color and the brown. Oh my gosh. These, these colors right here make my heart sing. This is, this is going to be so much fun. Ruth I'm just amazed. Okay, and you know why I'm just absolutely amazed? I mean, as if this wasn't enough, she sent more. Okay, so there's also this bag of yarn. This is a Lion Brand Summer Nights, which is an 82% acrylic, 18% polyester. And I really, really love these blues, and there's like a little bit of a periwinkle kind of a gray tone in there, and it sparkles. And as far as acrylic yarns go, I really do like Lion Brand. Um, yeah, this is going to make a great Easy Care shawl, probably. Um, I'm not putting a bunch of sparkle in my blanket, um, but this would make a wonderful shawl as a gift because I know it, it doesn't have to have any special care. It's not going to felt. Okay, so now I also have this Loops and Threads Snuggly Stripes Wool. This is going to be fun. Super fine. 75% wool, 25% nylon. Have you guys discovered Loops and Threads yarn? Um, Michaels carries a bunch of it. And I have made some socks, some baby blankets, um, a lot of different things out of Loops and Threads. And I do enjoy working with it. So this is another Snuggly Stripes Wool. Oh, I didn't say the colorway name on this one. What is it? Orange Blossom. So this first one was Orange Blossom. And this one is Saint Germain Rose. I'm not sure if I said that correctly, but that's going to be fun. So yeah, Ruth, you are so generous. And I thank you so much. From the bottom of my fiber-loving heart. Mwah. All right. So I'm going to set these aside with minimal crinkling, I hope. And we're going to move on and talk about whips. Because I want to show you the blanket that some of these yarns are going to go into. I have been working on it. I was working on this pretty monogamously until just a few weeks ago. And if you have watched my podcast before, you've seen this before. This is my northeasterly blanket. And um, I'll just unroll it here so I can hold it all up and show it to you. I am one, two, three, four, five. I'm on the sixth column. So here are the five columns that I have done. 
We'll just roll it up here so that you can see all the crazy colors. I've been trying to make the colors sort of sort of contrasty, not too blendy as they touch each other, um, but not crazy contrast. You know, I'm just trying to make it aesthetically pleasing. Um, so here we go. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to actually manage to roll this and show it to you at the same time. I can't even remember all of the yarns that are in this already. This is going to fit my queen size bed. So here's the beginning of column six. And it is long enough to fit lengthwise down my bed. So I've got a few more columns to go before it's finished. I'm uh, so happy that Ruth shared from her stash so that I can make some more progress on this. I was not out of yarn yet, but I was starting to get tired of the colors that I already had. So it's going to be so much fun to dig into some new yarn colors and make some more progress on this. However, it has been backburnered lately because um, I started another project. I was just getting tired of working on the blanket every night, doing the same thing. You know, it's great for watching podcasts or tutorials on YouTube or whatever you're into. But um, after a while, I just wanted something a little bit different. And I do actually have a, a bucket list of projects that I want to work on. And I was, um, well, the whole coronavirus thing was kind of kind of wiping me out. Um, I haven't felt super creative. I have two designs that I was working on that have really just ground to a screeching halt. Um, and part of that is because I've been super busy um, with doing videos for our church services and trying to make all of that available for those who are not able to come join us on Sunday mornings. Um, it's really turned into a part-time, not quite full-time, but quite substantial amount of time kind of job. Um, that's okay. So anyway, uh, I've been so crazy busy and my brain has been stretched into 5,000 different directions trying to learn about um, broadcasting software, um, cameras, how to set up your camera so that it actually works um, so your computer recognizes it as a webcam and um, you know live streaming versus pre-recording um, you know there's just there's so many things that I have had to learn and it's um, it's taken a lot of energy so yes I have had a lot on my mind lately that has not had anything to do with knitting <laughs> Um, I've been spending less time knitting. Actually, Joy mentioned this morning that she hasn't even seen me knit in days. Um, and I've just been up to, up to here in video editing and posting and stuff like that. So, anyway, back to the subject. I was getting tired of my blanket and I needed a new project. And so I thought, well, why don't I just pull out one of those things that I've had on my mind for like two or three years I've been wanting to do this and um, you know just get it started get get working on it I actually bought yarn for it and everything it's just been sitting there waiting for me to decide to start it um, and this blanket project that I'm working on I mean it's huge I'm not gonna be able to focus on that monogamously until it's finished it's just it, it just doesn't work like that so um, I decided, here, let me get it. I decided to start this project. Now, I thought about writing out the pattern for it, and I decided, no, I'm not going to do that, because it actually comes from a book that you may have seen before. I'm pretty sure if you have been around the knitting community for any length of time, you've heard of Elizabeth Zimmerman. This is 
a compilation of the newsletters that she published um, while she was um, recording her, well, it was like a knitting podcast. Um, she did a show on PBS about knitting and she wrote patterns. But her patterns, well, I don't want to, I can't just show you the whole pattern here. Anyway, let me show you a picture. Let's see if there's a picture. Is there a picture? Mm, I don't know. Anyway, um, it's leggings. I have been wanting to make myself a pair of leggings for years. Years and years. Ever since I got this book. And I can't even remember how long I've had this book. Um, so here, I will show you the picture that goes along with this pattern. Leggings. I hope you can see that. Um, and if not, when I'm editing, I will insert a photo or something. Anyway. Um, so, I have one leg. Done. No laughing about how short my legs are. <laughs> There's one leg done up to the point where they are joined together and then the, the top part is worked. So I started at the cuff at the ankle, worked some increases for the calf, worked up a little more, did some increases for the thighs, and I am this far on leg number two. Let's see. And I am using Addy Turbo Circular Needles, by the way, if you're curious. So, that's how far I am. I am in the middle of the increases for the thigh. So, I'm getting closer, you know. Pretty soon I'll be able to join them together and work the top part of the tights, the leggings. And I'm really, really excited about getting this project done. I did a pair of baby leggings once. Um, I think I probably did them for Joy. Maybe Elena. I don't know. Um, the, all the projects kind of run together after a while. <laughs> it was for one of my babies. Um, and I used a bulkier yarn. Not, not like bulky bulky, but bulkier than this. This is a fingering weight. Um, and this is from Swoon Fibers. And I believe it is the Mermaid Tails sock set. So it came with this variegated yarn and the contrast color. Um, and I bought two of the sock sets to make this. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to do the whole um, upper part. Um, I assume I will be using some of this green for um, the waist area. We'll see. I'm just going to keep working with this yarn until I run out and then I'll switch. Uh, if I need to get a gray or a blue or something to do a little bit more around the derriere, I will do that. But it would be nice if I could make this out of two sock sets, you know. That would be amazing. We'll see. Anyway, um, Elizabeth Zimmerman's pattern does not actually give you stitch counts. It gives you um, a gauge and measurements. You take your, your own measurements and you work so many inches um, you know, at this whatever your gauge and your measurements work out to. And then you work so many inches of increases you know, till you get to where you need to be. And then you work straight for a little while and then you start increasing again to the next set of measurements. Um, so I feel like I could write it out for some generic sizes, but it's not really my idea. It's Elizabeth Zimmerman's idea. I'm making a few little tweaks to it just for myself. But um, um, I think her method is actually the most streamlined and efficient, and um, uh, it's really a good, I think she called them pattern recipes. I think it's a good recipe, um, even though everybody's legs are proportioned differently. You might have to tweak the length a little bit, but it's working out really, really well for my gauge, which is not what she specified in her, her recipe. Um, but all of the 
you know, knit so many inches and then increase and then so many more inches, uh, it's fitting me really well. So um, I think she was just a genius. That's all there is to it. You know, applause for Elizabeth Zimmerman. I hope that she's up there in heaven hearing it. Um, okay, so that's those are my two whips that I have going right now. And right now that's enough. <laughs> that keeps me busy. Um, so, what do I want to talk about next? Next, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. This is my Gypsy Caravan shawl. And um, I'm going to call this my featured pattern for this podcast. Um, just because it's been getting a lot of attention lately. Um, not a lot, a lot of attention. But more than it has for a while. Um, it's been on Ravelry for a little while and all of a sudden I'm seeing people interested in this pattern again. People are liking it, people are purchasing it. Thank you very much if you're one of those who purchased my pattern. I do appreciate it. Um, I put a lot of myself into this. <laughs> and if you look at the Ravelry page for it, you can see that there are a couple of tutorials. Um, one is for the bell ruffle here and the other tutorial is for this lace pattern that I have in the gold section here. And the reason I did a tutorial for it is because it is a combination of, let me take this off and I'll show it to you better. It's knitted sideways and it is a combination of a cable and lace and it is worked the same way you would work an applied border on the edge of a shawl but then you pick up stitches on the other side of it and you continue knitting so this is my gypsy caravan shawl and i just love the way the stripes um kind of seesaw back and forth and they're not just stripes 